not talking to Ashok Teddy, the, the personal trainer to the rich and the infamous, right? Well, yes, yes. How did this deal? Uh, yeah, and you being one of them, of course. Huh? I refuse to be trained. I won't sit on here. No, no, no. You, you come no, to I'm not going to swear. I'm not going to swear. Never mind. So, a few, few how, hatches under the arms will help. How did this whole thing begin? Your passion for fitness and training? Uh, I, 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 was always a, I was always a gym guy, you know? When I was a builder, I was, that's, that's something that you did when you were in that kind of working class scheme. Yep. Then you, you finished your job on the building site. You, uh, you went to the pub and got drunk, or rather you went to the gym first <laughs> and exercised, and then you went to the pub and got drunk, so it was always like that. Right. Um, so, it started like that, completely un, um, what's the word? unplanned, and I never trained anyone in those days. For 20 odd years, I used to just go to the gym, but people would come and ask me. And you can your age, age, which I shall not say how old you are. No, no, you can, you can. Um, uh, 60, yeah, a few months ago, a few weeks ago actually, yeah. your flat stomach. Like, no, wow. no, no, it's one month away in, in Italy and I've been eating like a bloody pig. So, better than so, this? No, no, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. So come, I have exercise. I'll watch you. You can't just watch me. You have to do stuff. You have to do so stuff. So you tell me what I need to do to get my 36 down to 32. Well, you need to spend one hour and 15 minutes with, with me. Twice a week. And you will have a great chance. You're yeah, going to kill me. No, but and, and bear in mind one other thing. That every 10 years, your body takes a hit. So it's difficult in your 40s, it's fiendishly difficult in your 50s, and now I'm just going to my 60s, it's going to be well nigh impossible. Because when you're in your 20s and 30s, whatever you put on grows, you know, and it's very easy to build up muscles. As you get older, you lose muscle mass, and, and the fat stays, the muscle disappears. So people who know you as a, a writer, do they believe that you are really a personal trainer? No, they don't, they don't. Actually, quite often when I go to literary festivals abroad, uh, they look at me and they don't believe I'm a writer, first of all. And Why? Then, well, I think writers are meant to be kind of slightly, what's the word? Funny writing, is that the word? I don't know. You're far from you're, 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 No, no, that's the thing. But writers quite often have to behave in a certain way. They want to be bookish and a bit um, quiet, downplayed, studious, academic, what are the words? Little glasses. So, so. <laughs> Picture perfect. <laughs> uh, right. That's right. And you are yeah. nothing but that. No, no. Far from that. And what happens is, of course, in, in Sri Lanka, it gets people back up. Big time, big time, big time. Because here, you have to conform to what, what you're supposed to be. So, if you're a writer, you have to look like a writer. If you're a builder, you have to look like a builder. If you're a mathematician, you have to look like a mathematician. You can't be all three. That's really not allowed. You know? People get mad. So Ashok, tell me, what should one do, uh, a corporate who has no time at all, basic stuff that he or she can do to keep fit? Well, for Sri Lankans, South Asians, it's this part, the core, that's incredibly important. Uh, because of the butt meat, the rice and Absolutely, meat. and our lifestyle. I mean, it's very easy for anyone to put these on. It is really, it's really no big deal. And we all do, but I watch the guys at my local gym, Everyone does this, okay. uh, but nobody, nobody looks after the stuff. Yeah. So uh, what what they do is they wear a belt, which 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 conceals the butt. Yes. You know? But there's no <laughs> point having that. If you take a belt off, and that's the problem. You may have superb arms and legs, but if you don't have the stomach, your 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 shape is wrong. Right. Yeah. So there, there's no miracle here. You just have to do varieties of sit-ups, varieties of leg movements, uh, uh, varieties of sort of coming up like that. You know, it, it's that whole regime. Uh, and in my class, we have one hour and fifteen minutes of that, and there are thirty odd different exercises that you do. It's just hard work. There is no miracle cure. Whatever the newspaper, whatever the magazine, the health magazine tell you about creams that you rub to make things disappear, or Powders that you take. No shortcuts. No shortcuts. What about food? We love our rice and curry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and some people eat it all three meals a day. And interestingly, rice and curry is actually a very, very healthy diet. However, it's where the we, where, exactly, and where we make the mistake is we eat very late. People have, you know, oh, people have really lunch. Late. Yeah. People yeah. have lunch at three o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and they have dinner at eleven. Yes, That's yes, suicide. Yes. Absolute suicide. So really what are the best times? Well. Uh, now, this is one of those things where I say, don't do it at home. I actually don't have breakfast. I'm so used to just having a big cup of coffee. 
because then the kids were young, to school run, and then try go around and have to have breakfast. But and you breakfast your supposed to be one thing. Absolutely. Is Which is why I say don't do this at all. Okay. It is what works for me, right? But I have a thunderingly big lunch at 12 o'clock. Huge oh, lunch. Oh, mounds of rice, and I take thirds of rice. You know, I start off with a small thing and take, take three lots. Curries, everything, the works, and something sweet. Yeah? But that is my one, one really big 12. 12. If I can if I can eat at 12, I do. Um, but quite often it becomes 12 15, 12 30. But never, never 1 o'clock. It's always it's a red moon. It's 12 to 1. Basically. Yes, 12 to 1. Um, and then a lightish supper. One time. So well, there again, what I would tell people is to eat before 8. It, in this house, in practice, I have to tell the truth, it never happens till about 7.45 or so, yeah? But, but ideally, in a perfect world, 7 o'clock before 8 So, you go to cocktails and parties all that, the no, time, no, that is and the that trouble. goes on till 9, 10, yeah. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, on average, sort of, one, one goes out five times a week or four times mm -hmm. a week, as you know. Sri Lankans are so sociable. You, know, you, you can't say no, you can't refuse an invitation because people think you're proud. If you say yes and go, they'll say he'll turn up you to the men. So either way, either way, you, you get back. But, but, but the thing is, is that I hate going to things where dinner is delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. And they do it on purpose because the moment we Sri Lankans eat, we go home. And that's also such bad manners. Stay back and eat at 12 afternoon. Exactly. Far better to serve dinner at 7 30 or 8. Yes. Eat dinner and stay till 10, chat, etc. So, how do you cope with your hectic lifestyle? All these cocktails, invitations, and your flat stomach? With extreme difficulty because I'm also very greedy. You should see me at cocktail parties. I've I, seen it. Let's ask the Yes, exactly. <laughs> I've watched you. I eat everything. I eat everything. I'm a waiter's delight. Because all the waiter has to okay. do is stand up and do the right? And everything is finished. Okay. Right, so great talking to you on this. Uh, you're talking to Ashok Ferry, the, the personal trainer to the rich and the famous. I'm not asked you. Including the rich and famous. With reluctance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll catch you now uh, on our next channel. So catch you soon, everybody.